Okay, today we're going to do a tropical canvas. You'll love it. Full of colour, easy to do and quick. So let's get started. Right, today my canvas is roughly 25 by 30 centimetres, so it's uh, much bigger than the last ones, but I have to tell you, this one goes very quickly. So I'm going to take my big brush and wet that for the background. I'm going to get a little bit of the water off because I don't need too much paint on this, so just watch how much paint you put on. And I'm going to load only blue today in my palette. Yellow, blue, red, black, white. So I'm only going to load blue onto this brush to start and I'm going to cover the whole of the top of the canvas about a, I'd say about a quarter of the way down with this blue. It's a lovely blue, beautiful, rich blue. There we go. So let me cover that around that far down, I would say. And long sweeping brush mo mo motion like this because that gives you a smoother finish. Today I want much more smoother finish than on the last ones. Right, I'm going to wash the brush off. Make sure that I've got all of that paint out so it's a vigorous washing. Dry. I can check how much paint I've taken off uh, the brush by checking it on the cloth in front of me. Okay, I'm going to load only red on that brush now and use that red under the blue, going slightly over the edge of the blue. Now, while I go over the edge of the blue, I'm getting a nice blend of red and blue to make a purple. Up a little bit. I've loaded, now there's too much blue on my brush, so I'm going to wash the brush off again. Make sure I've got red on there only, and paint some more red. So that's blended quite nicely in that section there. I can go over it again, which I will do actually with my nice big sweeping motions. And you can see the more you go over it, the more it blends while the paint is wet. When the paint's dry, you haven't a hope of blending. Okay, there we go. More red. Wash the brush off, more red. I'm gonna take that red down to about two thirds of the canvas down, so around there. And I have to tell you, if you blink, you miss how fast this one is. So I like to take you through this fairly fast so that you don't think too much about it because I find that when you first start painting, you stress so much that you miss the fact that you're actually painting something well. There we go. Bit of a blend there. Wash the brush off vigorously so I have no more red in there. Make sure that there's no red. I'm going to load it up with yellow. The yellow goes under the red here. Like so. But while the red is still wet, I'm going to go over the red with that yellow brush. Actually take it all the way up. And you can see it just makes it a little bit of a richer colour. So now I've got an orange-red blend going there all the way across the canvas, like so. And as I said, if the paint is still wet, when you go back over it like that, it blends beautifully. If I needed some more red on there now, because I have added lots more yellow in there, wash the brush off, make sure that there's no yellow in there, load it up with red only, my red is quite uh, a watery red, so yours might be a bit thicker. So you might not need to do this. I think I just need to touch up my red a little there. So I've got a blend of blue, purple, red, all the way down to my yellow. The bottom part of my canvas, I want to make an orange color. So I'm going to give myself a horizon. This is where the bay is. I'm going to give myself a horizon of plain red. But as it mixes into the yellow, it's got a touch of orange. 
coming in. That yellow is still wet there. To make it red down to the bottom. Like that. And what? I'd say that's about a quarter of the way up. Maybe a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher. Your canvas will be slightly different from mine. There we go. And I actually want that to be a little bit more orange than red. So I'm going to take yellow and put yellow on that too while it's going, while it's drying. There we go. Rich orange. Beautiful. Now I'm going to wait for that to dry because I need to add black to that and the black needs to be on a dry background. Now I'm going to add very, very light touch of blue across the corner of the canvas here because that makes it, gives me a little bit of a shadow around the edge of my water. And because this blue is a little bit thicker than the red, I'm going to use the fraction of blue, just a fraction. Add it to the red. I don't think I'm running out of red. There we go. Add it to the red so I've got a little darker red than I have on here. And I'm going to put this on the corner of my canvas. Maybe a touch darker even. There. There. That's quite nice. So I've got a little bit of a shadow there and I've got a little bit of a shadow here in my lagoon. There we are. Blend that across. And I'm done for now. I'm going to wait for this to dry because the black that goes on top of this needs to go onto a dry background. Okay, coffee time over. Why don't we get on and do some sun? If everyone's ready, test your canvas to make sure it's dry enough. And then I'm going to change to this round brush. So I've got some more detail and I can do the sun. All right, let's get started. I'm going to load this brush up with white only because I'm going to put my sun somewhere in this vicinity. It's my sun going down. There we go. Let's uh, make it as round as I possibly can. I'm never good at making round suns, but oh, that'll do for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few details around the edge of the sun. Just a few with the very tip of the brush. Add a little bit more white. Just a few strokes around the sun just to make it a little bit more interesting. There we go. I quite like that. Yeah, I have some movement around my sun. Okay, let's load, wash that brush off. Let's load that up with black only. I'm going to dry it because I want to have a tip on this brush. So I'm going to load it with black only. Just a touch so that I've got a tip, you can see. And I'm going to, my paint is still a little bit wet here, but I'm still going to paint on top of it. I want some land mass in the distance. So I'm going to, with that thin brush, give myself a thin black line across the top of my horizon and give myself a little bit of a land mass in the distance. So my land mass has got some interesting lumps and bumps and those trail off into the sea. There. You can see my red still a little wet, my orange. I'm going to do the other side as well. Now I'm not making my land mass very high because I want it to look like it's fairly far away. Give myself a few interesting bumps. Don't forget, this one's yours. You can make as many bumps and lumps as you want. It's your landmass. This is just an indication of what can be achieved. I'm going to make my lines kind of join across there to look like a lagoon. So just a little indication that there's some kind of landmass in the distance. I also want some land mass in the front, just a touch of land here across the bottom of the canvas. So I'm using plain black and I'm going to give myself, kind of goes, bends up. My canvas is going to look like it's folding in with all my palm trees folding into this. So my land looks like it's going out at each corner. As I said, you do the way you want. 
Okay, I'm, I'm happy with what I've done here. If everyone's happy, let's move on. We're going to do some grass. Now, I've loaded up some more black on this brush, and I'm using the tip again. You can see it's a tip there. And if you just touch the tip of that brush across the bottom of this landmass here, you're going to get something that looks like grass. Because I'm just using the tip of the brush. And if you see, it just makes something that looks like grass. You can do some strokes if you want. That's up to you. Lots of little strokes. Or just touch that. Use your brushes and the shape of your brushes. As you practice a little bit more, you'll get to understand what each brush can do. This one has some nice tree and grass effects. There we go. So yes, when your brush is washed off nicely, there's no black left on there. A little bit of white. Add some white. That sun is shining in this area here, so I'm going to put some streaks across my sea like that now remember the sea is rippling so you don't have perfect equal strokes of sea coming down here They're little lines because my sea is moving so that indicates that there's movement there once I've done the white wash the brush off add yellow and do some yellow streaks as well remember the sun's got a yellow shine to it as well so that'll come out in your C here too. Some little strokes. Like that. Blending into the shadow that I've got going on the side here. And there, I think I'm done there. So I can just see that the sun is shining here. You can put some more there if you want. Just make sure that you wipe that yellow off. Clean your brush and add some more white here. I don't think I need, but I'm showing you that I, that you can. Yeah? Okay? Okay, moving on from there, I'm going to wash that brush off again, load it up with black again, and with this black we're going to put in the palm trees. I think I want my palm tree, remember my palm trees are curving in, so I'm going to put the first palm tree around here. So it's curving in around my sun. With that brush, it's smaller at the top, thicker towards the bottom. Maybe has a little bit of a curve there. Not quite straight. What tree ever is. It's got some lumps and bumps. Interesting lumps and bumps. There we go. The next one I'm going to make a little bit smaller. So maybe it's down a bit on the sea area, closer to the sea. So that's there. Comes out a bit there. And I've got a tall one. Comes from about into the purple area here. And I'm going to make that go off the edge of the canvas there. So that comes in from the edge of the canvas. Like that. It's quite a nice big thick one because it's so tall. And then on this side, I want one that's around the same size or a little bit smaller than the corresponding one there. This one faces that way. Maybe it's got a little bit of a curve in there, in the bottom. And maybe one more. I'm going to make one more around from about the same height as this one, but coming out a bit further. So that goes off the canvas a bit higher. That goes off the canvas in that direction there. Okay. It has a few interesting little bumps as well as it goes up. Right now, I'm going to suggest that we move from this this nice big round brush to the smaller brush. So I'm going to wash that brush off and put it to the side. Make sure there's no more black in there. Put it to the side and take the small brush. So this is the small detail brush. And this brush, let's wet that. Load that up with black. 
I'm going to do my palm fronds. My palm fronds are waving in the wind. So this one comes up from the center of this, the top of the palm tree here, and it goes up and down like that. I'm using the thin side of the brush to just do a few flicks across the bottom, going up towards the, the leaf itself, like that. And they don't all have to be going the same direction. You can make some go a different direction like so. It is two-sided palm frond here. This next one, I'm going to make it go up and around that way. And then do some flicks going out from there. Some feather light -like flicks going that way. This one, maybe I'm going to make it go down like that. And do some flicks off there. I'm using the very tip of the brush to give this flick effect. So it gets thinner as it goes out from the edge of that frond. This one, make it go around like that. And you can see some of the sunset coming through the back of those fronds. Quite effective. Let's do this one going this way and that goes behind this tree here so because it's black. There. It goes behind that tree. Put a few little flicks there. And maybe what I want is one that looks like it's going out that way. It's going out towards the sea. I have one coming down here. One there. All right, that's, I'm quite happy with that one. Let's do these ones here, across the top here. I'm going to have one frond that goes that way. This one's obviously going to be a bit bigger than the ones down below because it's a bigger tree, closer. So let's put a few more fronds in there, make them go in different directions, slightly different directions. Let's do another one going that way. And one here. You can see as it gets into the darker section of the sky, it's really quite an effective shadow effort. Maybe I'm going to make those a little bit longer towards the base of that frond there. Maybe one that goes there, goes straight down, like that. Bent in the wind. Do I want one coming over here? Small one? There we are. I decided I did. There. You can put coconuts in here as well. So if you put a little blob there and a little blob there, you've got coconuts at the top of your tree too. Okay. Let's move on to this side. This one. I want this frond to go over my sky like that. It's in enclosing my sun. Makes you look at the sun first. There we go. How are yours doing? Good. Right, here we are. Let's do one that way. Do one this way. Flick a few more fronds off there. See how my Beautiful silhouettes are coming. You can have a look and see if, if you need some more to darken some areas, do so. It's a silhouette. Right, where? Do I want one going straight up? There we go. I'm going to make one going straight up. That one's got some fronds that flick off that way. And one coming down, I think. Looks like it's facing down this way. Another one there. don't need to have too many. You can actually get away with just four. I like a few more on my trees here. I'm going to do one that goes out that way. And what about one that's a little bent here? Make it a little bent. There we go. So that's also, they're all coming in. 
So they're in enfolding my sun. They make my sun a little bit more prominent by folding around it. And last one. So you say you only need four really to make it look like a palm tree. But totally up to you how many you do do. There. I reckon that's done. For me, that's done. Step back, have a look at your canvases and see if there's anything else you need to do to that. And if there is not, the very last thing is your signature. It's your canvas. Please claim it. Mine's in. So that was really quick and easy, wasn't it? Right, if there's something else that you want to add, just remember you are the creator. Once you've stepped back, and had a good look at your canvas, you might want to add a few more things. You might want to add a little dog sitting down the bottom here. You might want to add some people. I want to add one more frond, say, so I'm going to add another frond coming down there. Maybe I think that I don't have enough detail in my palms, so I can do that. It's your canvas. Do what you want with it. But I think I'm finished there, so I'm going to say bye for now. We'll see you next time.